The South Australian Supreme Court in Adelaide, has heard shocking new details of a deadly episode that occurred more than 10 years ago between two bitter rival bikey clubs. The nasty feud between the Finks and the Hells Angels, had been ongoing for some time in South Australia. Tensions between the two clubs were escalating, with both sides arming themselves and preparing for war. The situation continued to spiral out of control and situations on the streets often became tense and hostile, with accusations and insults being hurled back and forth. There was a growing sense of hostility and animosity between the two clubs, and both sides began to take actions to protect themselves and prepare for any potential conflicts that may arise. Eventually, tensions reached a point where both sides acquired weapons as a means of defense. In November 2012, the feud took a tragic turn when an innocent victim, Jason de Ieso, was ruthlessly shot down in his own Poraka crash repairs workshop. Despite having no involvement whatsoever in the feud between the two clubs, he was mercilessly gunned down. Although de Ieso had a working relationship with some Finks members due to his spray painting and motorbike customization skills, he was not affiliated with either group and had no intentions of becoming a member. In fact, at the time of his death, he was in the process of disassociating himself from the group. His family and friends were left devastated by the senseless violence that claimed his life. The deadly Finks Angels conflict had been brewing for months, with incidents of violence and tension between the two groups escalating in the lead-up to the shooting. Just days before the firebombing that triggered the fatal attack, the gangs had clashed at a kickboxing event known as Knees of Fury, in Finden. Other incidents included an affray at a city nightclub on Hindley Street, a home invasion and shooting at the semaphore home of Finks member Mark Sandry, and an affray and shooting outside Strat's nightclub on Hindley Street. But the deadly series of events started on the night of November 20, 2012 when the House of Hells Angels bikies was firebombed by a Molotov cocktail. These are the scenes after the bikies arrived home, agitated to discover bombing has taken place. The very next day, 21st of November 2012 at 12.43 pm, a group of nine armed men arrived at De Yeso's workshop. They were after notorious Fink's bikey Charles Bonici. The group was retaliating to the fire bombing. The nine accused who were all members and associates of Hells Angels North Crew Chapter, had first traveled to a tattoo parlor in Salisbury North, that was owned by Fink's bikey Charles Bonici. They believed the Finks were responsible for the firebombing and entered the parlor to trash it, they then assaulted the staff. When they discovered that Bonici was not there but at De Ieso's workshop, they headed straight there. Once they arrived at the Poraka business, Bonici had just left, it's possible that the target and his attackers would have passed each other. The accused men then walked up to the roller door, produced their firearms, and opened fire. Staff members at the workshop were caught in the chaos and sought shelter wherever they could. Jason de Ieso, who was just leaving the front office, faced the group as the shooting started. All this was recorded on the parking CCTV camera. One of the accused men, who was standing at the entry to the workshop just a few meters away from de Ieso, fired a sawn-off shotgun at point-blank range, causing catastrophic injuries to victim's brain and killing him instantly. The nine accused, who were each disguised with hooded jumpers and face coverings, then ran and left in two small white cars. After years of investigation and hard work, South Australian police were finally able to arrest all nine men. All these accused members and associates of the Hells Angels North Crew chapter now face murder charges. They are Hussein Alswain, Muhammad Alswain, Musa Ali Alswain, Daniel Jale, Ross Montgomery, Siwan Maradi, Kyle Pride, and Nicholas Sonnies. They have each pleaded not guilty to the charge of murder, while the ninth man, who was also believed to be part of the group, has since committed suicide. Prosecutors allege that Musa Alswain, the youngest of the three Alswain brothers, fired the fatal shot. 31 years old Musa is a son of Iraqi refugees, and a boxer by profession. 
Alswain came into the ring as a teenager who was being racially abused at school, after arriving in Australia as an 18-month-old. At one point he was aiming to represent Australia at the Olympics. Police allege he had clear links with the 81s and was not a fully patched member at the time of this incident. During the trial, prosecutors presented evidence showing that Musa Alswain was wearing a blue hooded jumper on the day and carrying a sawn-off shotgun. His DNA was later found on the seatbelt, steering wheel, gear stick, and handbrake of one of the cars used in the getaway. Ballistics testing report also revealed that markings on a spent bullet found at the scene, matched to the one found in the pool of blood near victim's head. CCTV footage showed that only one weapon was used to fire the fatal round. Five out of the nine men were carrying guns and three of those were fired. Two of those guns were .22 pistols and did not fire the fatal shot. The 15-member jury trial is ongoing and is expected to hear from numerous eyewitnesses, and will last for approximately six months.